What we're going to be going over here is absorption costing, and this would be used in cost accounting here. And absorption costing, it's one of the inventory valuation methods here in cost accounting. And really, we have four different inventory value evaluation methods here, and we're going to be looking at full absorption costing here. It may be just called absorption costing or full absorption costing. And then the other thing we're going to touch on is the input measurement here. And this is where we're going to be looking at our actual normal and standard costing. Those would be the costs that flow into and through our inventory here. In this case, we're going to be looking at full absorption. Okay, so first thing here in absorption costing, what we have to do determine is what's going into our inventory account here and being capitalized versus what's going to be expensed. And it's going to be expensed in this case when, when it's incurred here. So for absorption costing, the direct material, your direct labor, your factory overhead, both the variable portion here and your factory overhead, the fixed portion, they all flow into our inventory account here and they're capitalized. The only thing that's being expensed here is the selling and administrative, both the variable and fixed portion here are selling and administrative. And when I say selling and administrative, that would be lumping together like research development and all those other overhead departments here, you know, engineering and so forth. They could be included here in selling and administrative uh, expenses here. Okay, so that's our absorption costing. All, all our direct materials, labor, and all of the uh, factory overhead, both variable and fixed, go into the inventory account. They're capitalized there. And the only thing that's being expensed are all those overhead departments, selling and administrative and so forth. Both variable and fixed amounts are expensed when they incur. Okay. So the next thing we're going to go through here is our cost flow for absorption costing. And what I'm showing here is the cost flow. We're going to have our asset accounts here, uh, those factory costs here, and they're going to work and go flow into work and process, finish goods, and then they're going to end up here as an expense under cost of goods sold. And we're just going to break apart here all those, uh, all those factory costs here versus our selling and administrative costs here. Okay, so for our assets here as factory all those factory costs here for the direct materials, direct labor, and all the overhead here, they would be accumulated here and they would go in. The total manufacturing costs would flow into our work and process account here. And uh, what we would do here, we'd take our beginning work and process, and then we'd add to it those total manufacturing costs that we have here for direct material, labor, and overhead. Add to our beginning work and process, and then we'd be subtracting it from at the ending work and process. And that's going to give us our cost of goods manufactured here. So cost of goods manufactured uh, flows out of our work and process into our finished goods account. Again, another asset account here. And this is where we take our beginning finished goods. We'd add to it our cost of goods manufactured here. And then we'd subtract from it the ending finished goods. So that's going to give us our cost of goods sold. And then our cost of goods sold is, again, going to be uh, flow into our cost of goods sold account here. And that is what we're going to be expensing against our sales here for the period. And then the other thing we have to deal with that selling and administrative costs. Again, they would be sitting over here. And they're going to flow directly in as period costs here. Whatever, they'd be costed out separate. They wouldn't be included in our cost of goods sold, but they would be a separate, a separate period. For whatever period they're looking at, they would be expensed for that particular period. Okay, so... the three points that we'd be going through here for our cost flow. All the factory costs are charged to inventory here, labor material and all the overhead. Secondly, all inventory costs represent assets until the products are sold. Then the costs are charged to an expense here to cost the goods sold. So we have to wait until the products are sold before we can expense off our cost of goods sold. And then those cost of goods sold as those expenses are going to be matched with the sales revenue on the income statement. And thirdly here, the selling and administrative costs are charged to an expense or period cost as they're incurred. Okay, so that's our cost flow for absorption costing. Okay, the next thing we want to look at is our income statement format here for absorption costing. And that's really a six-step procedure here. And I've got two find here. This is what we're going to be looking for here. And then we're going to have the equation shown over here. So first starting word, our direct material that's used. We uh, take our beginning materials here. We'd add 
all the purchase materials that we have for the period and then we'd have to subtract out our ending materials that we have here and that's going to give us the direct material that we've used here for the period. Now taking that direct material used we can determine our manufacturing costs. So we take the direct material that we used here for the period, add to it our direct labor and add to that the factory overhead both variable and fixed portions and that's going to give us our total manufacturing costs here. I'm showing that TMC here is total manufacturing costs. So now we take those total manufacturing costs and we can determine our cost of goods manufactured. So we take the total manufacturing cost, add to it our beginning work and process, and then we'd subtract from it the ending work and process. And that's going to give us our cost of goods manufactured. Okay, so now we can determine our cost of goods sold. Just add, take our cost of goods manufactured here, add to it our beginning finished goods, subtract our ending finished goods from it. That's going to give us our cost of goods sold. Now we can determine our gross profit. This is the case where we collect our sales dollars here for the period and subtract from it our cost of goods sold here. That gives us our gross profit. Now we can determine our income before taxes. You just take our gross profit and this is the case where you're going to subtract all your selling and administrative expenses, both the fixed and variable portions from your gross profit. That gives you your net income before taxes. Okay, so that's our income statement format here for absorption costing. Really a six-step six process here. And then lastly, let's look at our, we talked about those input measurements. These alternative inventory costing inputs for those input measurement bases here. This is the cost that flow into and through our inventory. And what we have here, we had those three different uh, input measurements here. We can either use actual costing, normal costing, or standard costing for our absorption costing here. And uh, what we'd be looking at are different manufacturing costs here. And what we would have, we would have our variable direct costs here. Those would be like our labors, uh, labor and material here, those direct labors and materials. And then we are going to have our variable overhead costs here. And then we also have our fixed direct costs, whatever they may be here. And then we're going to have our fixed overhead here. Okay, so we've got really these three different measurements that we could use, actual, normal, or standard costing. So let's just look at them. Say our actual costing, that's where we're going to just take some actual rate or price here for those manufacturing input costs here, times the actual quantity that we used here for the period. So that's for actual costing. And then standard costing, we're just going to take some standard price or rate here for those manufacturing costs that we have here, times some standard quantity that's allowed here. So standard costing, we're setting some predetermined amount here for both our uh, price or rate that we pay for those manufacturing costs times the standard quantity that we allow here, we set up. So that's standard costing. Now normal costing, that this is the case here where it's very similar to actual costing except for two exceptions here and that's going to be our variable overhead here and our fixed overhead amount. This is the case here where for normal costing we're going to take a budgeted rate here that we have for our variable overhead and a budgeted rate that we have for our fixed overhead here times the actual quantity that we've used in each of those here. So normal costing it's going to depart from actual costing here in the fact that instead of taking the actual rate here for our variable overhead and our fixed overhead, we're taking some budgeted or predetermined rate similar to a standard costing here. Otherwise, for our variable direct, we same as our actual costing, actual price times the actual quantity used here. And then fixed direct, same as actual costing, actual price times some actual quantity used. The only departure here from actual costing is the fact that we're using some budgeted rate here for variable overhead and our fixed overhead. But actual costing and normal costing really work off the same. They take the actual quantity that you use for the period here. And we're talking about actual quantity used. Those would be for our, our variable directs, variable overhead, fixed direct, and fixed overhead here. Whereas standard costing, that it takes some predetermined rate here for the price and quantity that you use here for each of those manufacturing costs. Okay, so uh, 
this is, we went over here absorption costing and we looked at how we we looked at the different inventory and how we what we'd include in inventory and what we would be expensing here for the period here okay so that'll end our discussion